Hello and welcome back to Off Grid Style. I'm Nikki. Today we are discussing something called food weaponization. What the heck is that? Well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's when countries or people or whoever use food as another weapon. And it is actively going on by 34 countries right now as we speak. Typically it's the withholding of food, but it could also be um, putting something in food so it's an edible, things like that. The U.S. and 90 other countries took a stand and signed an agreement to stand down on food weaponization. The problem is, is that 102 other countries in the world didn't agree and are uh, possibly able to do it. And like I said, 34 countries are doing it right now. So let's find out what we can do to protect ourselves. So what the heck is going on? We know that we have lost farmers and farms, but we know we still grow a lot of food in the U.S. The problem is, is that, yeah, we grow a lot of food, but it doesn't necessarily come to American people. We have contracts with other countries to give them food, and the U.S. sells a lot of it to the highest bidder. In the meantime, 29% of Americans today are suffering from food insecurity, meaning they do not know if or when they will receive enough food. If you control the food, you control the people. So what can we do? Well, one of the things is to diversify your food sources. This means getting your products, your produce, and other things from more than just the grocery store. For instance, uh, farmers markets, local markets, um, homegrown yourself, and also possibly a community garden. Reduce your reliance on the regular food supply. You will be less likely to be affected as harshly by food chain supply issues. And also, if somebody does weaponize against us regarding our food, you've got some protection. Learn how to preserve food in different ways. Home canning, drying or dehydrating the foods, fermenting foods, which to give you a couple examples would be yogurt and pickles. Also smoking your meats will help you make them last longer. Stockpile preserved foods to help you through any shortages or supply chain issues or again, if somebody decides to weaponize our food chain. Community resiliency. What this means is develop relationships with your neighbors, with locals around you. Begin bartering and trading with them. If you have too much of one type of produce and they have a lot of another type, there you go, that's a perfect trade. And I do have an, a video on bartering if you wanna hunt for that. Just subscribe to the channel and you can go to our channel page and see that video. Also, supporting each other. That's important too. So don't forget that when you are diversifying and, and, and getting your community resilient. Urban agriculture. This is a term. It basically means grow what you can in the space you have. And there's a few different tricks and tips to do this. One, of course, is container gardening. Also, you've got vertical gardening, and that can be in a lot of different ways, using twine and string. It can be using something that's ready-made, like you see in the picture here on the video, all different kinds of stuff. Google it and see what you can do. Also, rooftop gardening, if you're able to, um, if that is an option for you. Hydroponics and aquaponics. I love my hydroponic systems. I have several. I have a couple outside on a protected porch area, and then I have two in the house as well. Um, hydroponics is basically growing plants in a pumped water medium and with nutrients provided. And it grows them much healthier, their roots are cleaner, so um, if you're looking for something uh, like dandelions, for instance, um, dandelion roots, 
to use for whatever tea, um, herbal remedies, great way to grow them. You don't want to grow any root vegetables in hydroponics because it won't work. There's not enough room. Aquaponics is involving fish with your hydroponic system. And this is a really cool way to kind of incorporate both. So you have the fish floating around on the bottom. Their waste uh, is then used to feed the plants nutrients that are growing hydroponically. This is kind of something that is a little harder to do in, in, in a scale like we want to do, which would be smaller, but you can always try it. Keep your pantry well stocked. I know I say that all the time, but it's kind of important. Keep your pantry well stocked. Beans, rice, pasta, canned goods, dried fruits, store flour in mylar bags and put that in five gallon buckets. Same thing with sugar and salt. These definitely will get you through if someone does decide that they would like to attempt to weaponize their food exports against us, you've got some protection. Stock up on your water, um, drinking water, both for cooking and for drinking. Also look into a water filtration system of some sort and get one that's good. Like for instance, I'm showing you a Berkey here on the video. Berkeys are amazing. They will last you for years and you will have the cleanest water you've ever imagined. Educate yourself. Learn about food systems. Learn about agriculture. Take classes. Study online. Ask local farmers and nursery owners what they do and how they grow things and what works for them. Also learn about food security. The availability of food in a country and the availability of people to access, afford, and source that food, that is food security. And as I explained in the beginning, 29% of people in America today, right now, do not feel food secure. Political awareness. Um, yeah, we all think we are and we all think that we know what's going on, but we really, really don't. And I think that's getting proven more and more as we hear things coming out every day. Don't depend on one source for your information. That would be like relying on the local news to tell you about international stuff that's going on. Mainstream media is not going to touch this subject unless they absolutely have to because they don't want people to wig out and start hoarding. YouTube is a great source, but use it with a grain of salt. Still, once you find out something on YouTube or you hear something, do your own research. That's why you have the internet. Read articles. See what you can find. Find out the facts, not just what somebody on a TV show that was nice looking and, and you know, whatever, told you. Research for yourself. Find out about international policies and national policies, all related to food security. You will be better prepared for a potential weaponization of food just by spending that little bit of time educating yourself. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, tell me you were here, please. And I will see you again soon. Thank you.